This is another short video about continuity um, in a topological space. So continuity of a function between two topological spaces, I should say. And so maybe uh, continuity in a topological sense again. So um, there was a video before this that kind of went over what the definition of continuity was in a topological space. And I want to give you um, a characterization of that that is maybe a little bit easier to uh, memorize. And so if you've got um, a function between two topological spaces, say xt. So x has topology t. Let's say y has topology fancy u is, um, I'll say it this way. So given this, um, the following are equivalent. TFAE is short for that. And so 1, f is continuous. Uh, 2, um, F inverse of V is in T for any V in U. And uh, what's the next thing that I want to tell you? Three, um, if C is closed in uh, Y, then the preimage of C is closed in X. And then maybe what I'd like to do is I'm going to move this down a little bit. And I wrote number two kind of conveniently in notation. Maybe what's that say in like human words? This is trying to say if V is open in um, Y, then the free image of V is open in X. I should also say a little bit, maybe you haven't seen this kind of setup for, uh, this is a theorem, um, maybe you haven't seen this setup before with this to following is equivalent. Um, what it's saying is that uh, there's an if and only if between each of the three of these. So it's saying one and two, one if and only if two, and it's simultaneously saying two if and only if three, and so therefore also one and if and only if three. So we're just saying that all three of these things are equivalent to each other. So one, if and only if two, if and only if three. And uh, in case you've never gone about trying to prove such a thing, um, what people, how these things are usually structured is um, you would show one implies two, and then you'd probably show two implies three, and then you'd probably show that uh, one implies three as well. And you see that you get kind of this, it's kind of circle of logic here in, in, in a good way. Usually circle and logic aren't supposed to be in the same sentence. But uh, um, I guess what you see is that that would show that all three of these are equivalent to each other. That's not to say that this isn't the only uh, little arrows that you could use to prove such a thing. Um, you could go the other, there, there are other options too, but that's just a common way. And just so we see maybe how you might approach or uh, um, start off with the logic to prove such a thing. Um, so yeah, what are the things that that should stick out in your head again. So we're saying if you've got a continuous function, then the preimage of an open set is open is another way to say number two. That might be say something that you just say to yourself over and over. And we're saying that that's equivalent to saying that the preimage of a closed set should still be closed. So if there was a way to categorize what two continuous functions do that other functions might not, it would be exactly those two things that I just said. You could say continuous functions are the, exactly the ones that guarantee that the preimage of an open set is open, or you could say that the continuous functions are exactly the functions that guarantee that the preimage of a closed set um, is closed. Um, and now, what that brings me to is there's another type of there are two other types of functions that we're going to look at uh, in this class. So maybe another definition, another setup here. Uh, so actually the same same kind of setup. So I've got some function between two topological spaces, um, x and y. The topology on x is t, and the topology on y is super fancy u. We're going to say that f is open, so the function is open. We've done a lot to talk about like what's an open set. That's just something that's in one of your topologies here. Now I'm going to tell you what's it mean to say that a function is open. So we're going to say this function f is open if f of u is in u whenever um, u 
is in t. So in other words, this says the function f is open if it sends open sets to open sets. All right, and you're like, is that, that seems similar to continuity. With continuity, remember, you're looking backwards. The preimage of an open set is open. So now we're saying that a function is open if it sends an open set to an open set. And we're gonna say another definition here. We'll make a similar one. Um, we'll say that, uh, say F, same setup as above. Say F is closed. So again, what's it mean for the function to be closed? Um, same kind of thing. Um, if um, it sends, I'll just say it in people words, closed sets in X to a closed set in Y. Maybe it would be helpful if I said that here. If it sends open sets in X to open sets in Y. And um, so there's a good example um, about how, you know, it seems like these things might be related to being continuous in some way, um, but it's not necessarily the case. So what is their relationship? So um, you can definitely have continuous functions that aren't open, and you can also have open, fun open functions um, that are not continuous. So uh, let's see, let's say for example here, you've got this function f that goes from the real numbers to the real numbers, but I'm gonna tell you about different topologies on the real numbers in each case. So R, fancy U here, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna let this be the discrete topology. And remember that meant that every single subset of R is gonna be called open. And we're gonna let this be the usual topology. So just like, you know, the good basis for this one is like open intervals, you know, A comma B, one that we're used to. And so we're just gonna let this two be like the identity. What do I mean by that? Defined by, let's just say f of little x just spits x back out. Um, so in this case, this thing, so f is continuous. And um, let's see, why is this the case? Well, if you had, you know, any x on the real line, right? And you took any neighborhood around x, let's say this one, right? And how do I know my neighborhood looks like that? Well, because I got the usual topology. What we're gonna do is we're gonna look back in this copy of the real line, and we're gonna think about, okay, here's x again. Can I find an open set back here that contains x and make sure it gets sent into that? Well, remember with the discrete topology, the singleton x itself is in the topology. And so sure, x gets sent into there. So when something back here in your, in your domain, if that space has the discrete topology, then um, continuous is a little bit of a given. So this function is definitely continuous. Um, now the trickier part, and again the new concept, is f is not open. And um, to see that, so f is not open, um, so what we'd like to see is, is it possible to find an open set in the domain now that does not get set to an open set over here? So is there an open set whose image is not in you? And so we're gonna just gonna use the same idea that since you've got the discrete topology versus the usual topology, which are you know made up of your nice open intervals, so this is not open since take Maybe I'll say it this way. If x is in R, then the singleton x is in T, since that's the discrete topology. I'm going to pretend that I spelled topology right. Hold on. Topology. That looks better. But uh, f of the singleton x, that's kind of silly. It's just x. Now where am I looking at? Well, if I applied x to this thing, now I'm over on the usual copy of the real line that I'm used to thinking about with open intervals and whatnot. Um, but f of x equals x. Uh, in this case, um, its image, maybe I'll write it as a set two, 
is not in fancy you. Cool. So I'm just saying that F doesn't change the set. It spits out this singleton set X here, but I know that singletons are not open in the usual topology here. I know that they're closed. And so what did I just show? I showed that there exists an open set whose image is not open. And that violates the definition of what it meant for the function F to be open. So F's continuous, but F's not open.